Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of From Blueprints to Bleachers. And in today's third episode ever, we are going to be covering the ever giving and always lovely UT San Antonio Stadium, the Alamo Dome. We're going to be keeping the same format as last time. And if you're new here, the protocol is a brief synopsis of the history of how this bad boy came to be before we dive into the technical and more opinionated steps of rating the architectural appeal, quality and quantity of capacity, summarize fan appeal, and delve as deep as we can into modern amenities and how they stack up against other schools and first their conference and eventually the world. All right, everybody, no more twisting the crank of this. Let's get going. History. The Alamo Dome was originally built with an NFL team in mind, and while it has housed a few of those games, it has mostly been used for anything but, as the first tenant was the San Antonio Spurs from the stadium's inception in 1993 to 2002. The field also showed off its versatility early on into its existence when it hosted the one-year wonder and divisional round loser, the San Antonio Texans of the Canadian Football League in 1995, and a minor league hockey team in from 1996 and 1998, proving accommodating to fans and stadium setup crews alike when switching from the regulation 65-yard width of Canadian Football League field to either a hockey or basketball stadium. Granted, you did lose a bit of functionality as the hockey or basketball stadium is on to the side with a set of temporary bleachers, whereas ideally it would be in the center like the football stadium orientation of the Alamo Dome or a classic uh, NBA stadium nowadays would be. Our buddy the Alamo Dome also housed the Saints post-Katrina in 2005, proving to me its most high-profile tenant until, of course, the new, now favorite tenant, that's right, you guessed it, the San Antonio Talons of the Arena Football League. <laughs> I'm just pulling your leg, Roadrunner fans. We all know you've been doing the Dome right since 2011 when you set the record for a college startup season attendance average at 35,251 people. And you have the perfect springtime seat warmer in the San Antonio Brahmas. This stadium is one that I have been very excited to talk about with this as it has gained national appeal after being published in engineering news record and architectural records alike. The exterior brick coloring matches the color scale of the San Antonio skyline perfectly, and the orientation of the windows accents it in a modern way that has stood the test of time. The architect influenced structure into design in this way as well, with the interior metal truss system contributing to the daunting dome look that appeals to football and concert goers alike. All of the interior seating is colored to match the UTSA uniforms and logo, which is a very well-placed thought throughout the stadium, with the corridors being very wide and spaced out, but with enough visibility to navigate you to your desired part of the stadium. Overall, I could go on forever about how this thing is great, so we're just going to go ahead and give it the A plus that it deserves, and head on over to... Capacity. You might not have guessed that the unique cable-supported trusses were a necessity in getting a 65,000-plus patron stadium in such a tight spot, but indeed it was, and with specialized steel cable out of Europe at that. While UTSA normally just goes for the lower bowl of around 35,000 seats, they always have the availability to bust it down wild style and open the several upper decks that seat quality matches that of those below it, which is indefinitely not what we're used to seeing as far as stadiums go, especially those topping 25,000 seats. The corridors to navigate are that of an NFL stadium, and multiple parties can navigate in and out of road without much hassle, which makes going for the camera appealing lower bowl much easier, as not much more space is sacrificed. There is also a minor amount of suite seating as well, making this kind of an all-you-can-ask-for combo, and we're going to be giving it an A+, as far as capacity goes, with the seat quality and quantity being that of anything that you could ask for and more. Modern Amenities 
The artificial turf is a soft top removable system in order to be replaceable and movable, which helps with the longevity as well as the ease of converting the field into whatever use necessary, as this field has a multi-purpose state of mind. The bathrooms are plentiful and well kept with directional boards everywhere in order to help even the shortest and tallest of friends to get where they need to be. Most of all the various different concessions are in high supply and have a good variety to them as well. You know who you Whoa, want to subscribe. Hey there. You know what else subscribe. has a good variety? This channel. Why don't you, you know click, click, click that subscribe button and we'll get right back on the video. It's all inside of an air-conditioned dome with plenty of space to stand and figure out what you want without impeding on the walkway of people trying to navigate to their seats, which is another highly sought after perk of mine that a lot of the open stadiums have a lot of trouble with. The current sound system was custom designed by Adibri, a Dallas-based design firm and is composed of 76 K2 boxes, 12 KS28 subwoofers, and powered by an LA8 and LA12X amplified controller. It is pretty hard to beat this, so I again have to give this stadium an A+, as far as the viewable amenities. Fan appeal. Now, this is a category that proves that money can only get you so far with a stadium, especially when it comes to longevity and culture. While the average yearly fan attendance in recent memory being 25,000, is nothing to shake a stick at all. But the fact that I have been over the moon about this stadium would definitely have you thinking it tops the conference in attendance. This is definitely something to do with the fact that UTSA is a very recent startup program with less than 15 years of history. And I don't mean to say that the students don't get behind the school, as the undergrad is at 28,000 students. So quite close to the average attendance of who is attending these games, meaning I am clearly going the other way with this approach that the program is nowhere near old enough to command the alumni attendance that many of these storied programs have due to their years of existing and having a fan base at all, with probably a much more lackluster stadium at that because they're going to be at that game no matter what. If they're going to improve in this, it's going to be with keeping up the fan culture and involving the alumni somehow as well. We're going to be giving these guys a beat and hope to see them grow some thick roots here in the coming years. Well, there you have it, folks. The Alamo Dome in its very glory for all of you to see, broken down brick by brick, from window to paver, from cleat to goalpost, you name it, we rated it. We're going to be giving it an A overall. It was built to house an NFL crowd at the time, and it sure looks and feels like one that has been fine-tuned for the college ball lifestyle. This stadium is a gym. That's only complaint is that it could feel a bit more nostalgic having only been around for three decades and the school's program not having been around for not even half of that. I thoroughly enjoyed looking at its award-winning design and definitely find myself impressed at the advancement in construction technology that this stadium brought forth as well.